What's good, Ken folk? You are now rocking with the gaming mobster, Screwface Capone, and welcome to another episode of the Shark Tank. The Shark Tank is my special segment where I take a look at a game's demo or beta and give it a grade based on how likely I am to buy it when the full game drops. Today's episode is a request of sorts. The game's developer, a one man shop named Johnny Ostrid, reached out to me on Twitter and recommended that I check it out. I was waiting for my gear to get back at the time and planned to do a trailer takedown once I did. I'm not going to recap the death of my old computer and the birth of my new one once again, but by the time it was ready, he had released a demo on itch.io and you can wishlist the game on Steam. So I decided to download the demo and check it out. Shadow Legends 2 is a sequel to Shadow Legends. I never played the original, but judging by its looks on Steam, it's inspired by Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Shadow Legends 2 is also inspired by Zelda, but it also looks like a long lost N64 game. I'm not sold on the art style as personally it is in my cup of tea, but it works for what the developer is trying to do. It's like what if Nintendo made a top down 2D Zelda game on a Nintendo 64. You play as a young orc named Magrin who lands on Thunder Island. You'll explore dungeons, unlock new skills, and cook. While you don't see much of the story in the demo, you'll get a good idea of the gameplay. You hack and slash, and you can also have a long range attack. Because this is inspired by Zelda, of course you'll spend a lot of time cutting down weeds and breaking pots. You'll be exploring dungeons, and there are a lot of puzzles and traps within these dungeons. The game was pretty forgiving, at least the dungeon in the demo that I played through. If I got killed, I merely restarted at the beginning, but all the progress I made, in particular, any doors I unlocked was still there, so I didn't have to repeat things over. You can also fast travel. Of course, in the demo, it was only between two areas in the overworld. One particularly cool ability that you gain is a trick that lets you possess certain people or objects, and you'll use this to make your way through the demo's main dungeon. You basically possess another creature and use them to solve puzzles. You can even unlock skills specifically for this creature and at the end, there's a boss fight. Like typical bosses in this genre, it runs on a pattern, and once you figure out the pattern, it's child's play. I wasn't sure if there was anything after the boss, and the demo pretty much took me around 45 minutes to play through. The game does feature combat, but it feels like the main scope of the gameplay here is solving puzzles. It actually feels a bit chill compared to other action RPGs. Kinda reminds me of Akira, which was a puzzle game that I looked at a few months back. It's easy to pick up and play, and it looks like there will be a lot more added on to the gameplay once it's released. There is lore and background info about the game's world, however none of it was present in the demo. You can also grab her ingredients and cook meals that will give you temporary buffs. You even have a healthy amount of skill points, so you can check out the upgrades that are available in the demo and try out certain builds. Alright, time to grade this one. Now before I give this a grade, it must be said that this is a solo developer who has been working on this game for 4 years. Still, this is the Shark Tank. You don't get sympathy from me. And if you can't swim, you're bound to drown. That being said though, this isn't half bad. In fact, it's pretty good so far. I'm giving it a B average. The gameplay is easy to pick up and play and from what I see in the demo, the puzzles are pretty creative. I didn't see anything glaringly wrong with the game either. If anything, I'm not too huge on the graphical style, but again, that's my personal preference. And as I said earlier, it nails that Nintendo 64 and Zelda style feel, and it's obviously what the developer was going for. Hopefully the developer builds on a foundation that's set down in the demo, and the full game could be a major sleeper hit among the indie scene. At the very least, fans of games like A Link to the Past will find plenty to enjoy about it. He put a lot of passion into this game, and I can tell. So that wraps it up for this episode of The Shark Tank. It's great to be back on my BS with an indie focus video, especially after last week's look at Forspoken. I like to look at indie titles, and I like to look at stuff that's different. I also like to look at retro stuff, and I also like to look at the occasional cool toy here and there. So, what do you think about this game? Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, if you have any suggestions for games I should look at, then again, feel free to reach out to me. Especially if you're a developer and you're not scared. 
If you got a demo or a trailer out, I want to know about it. If you like what you just watched, hit that thumbs up icon. If you're new to the channel and you want to join the mob, hit that big red subscribe button and click the bell icon. That way you'll become a made man and when a new video drops, you'll get the news straight from the Don himself. Like I said, I like to look at indie games, retro titles, and cool toys. So if you want something different, stick around and check it out. Now earlier I mentioned a game called Akira. It's another throwback puzzle adventure game that has a pretty chill atmosphere while making you think and testing your skills. If you want to learn more about it then click the video that just popped up on your screen. For now though have a great weekend and I'm Audi 51000G Ken folks.